So Uport is working on decentralized identity. Um, so how do you manifest the digital identity without requiring a centralized service? Hi, I'm Ross Gage from AlphaGrow. Today we're here at Blockchain Week at Starfish Labs and we're here with Kames from Consensus, who's working on Uport. Kames, how are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. Awesome, thanks for coming. <laughs> Absolutely. So Kames, tell me about Uport. What is it? Yes, so Uport is working on decentralized identity. Um, so how do you manifest the digital identity without requiring a centralized service, like the Facebooks and the Google? Um, so we basically focus on a protocol that allows that to arise. And so the three main tenets of blockchain are decentralized identity is uh, blockchain IDs, zero trust data stores, and universal discoverability. Cool, so there's three parts to that. Yes. So the, the overhaul is you're not a LinkedIn, you're not a Facebook, you don't update your data. Yep. That means that you grab data from all over the internet and come to a consensus of what this person's identity is? So this is actually a pretty interesting concept. The, how you manifest an identity is, is a little flipped on its head. And so you really need a community to be able to validate who you are. And one way to think about this is like proof of individuality. So anybody can spin up 100 keys and pretend to be these 100 different people. And so you collect attestations from what are called different trust anchors within the ecosystem. Gotcha. Can yeah. you define a trust anchor for me? Yep. And so a trust anchor is someone who um, <clears throat> you're willing to trust and will provide an attestation making a claim about you. So if you go through like a KYC service mm -hmm. um, and you go to on Fido and they verify your government ID and your passport, they would issue an attestation saying, here's your name, here's your address, here's your birth date. And if you trust that trust anchor who made that, who has made that claim, um, then you can understand that this person is who they are, who they claim to be. Gotcha. So yep. if they KYC'd you, mm -hmm. but I trusted them, yep. then I trust that you're who yes. you say you are. Yes. Awesome. You said there was three different tiers that mm -hmm. you use. Can you go over what those are again and start at the top? Yeah, so like the three pillars. So like obviously you need a blockchain ID. So you need this universal ID that <clears throat> is borderless and censorship resistant. Um, and so that is the public address of a public private key pair. Um, and then you add a, <clears throat> a DID specification. And so Uport just came out with EtherDID. Um, so it's DID colon Ether slash that public address. Um, and so that's just how you identify this person. Um, the second it is, is a zero trust data store. Wait, or, so sorry. I have an identity on the blockchain. Yes. I have a DID specification. Yes. How are those different? <clears throat> Sounds yeah. like it's... So there's a working group on W. 3C that works on the dead, uh, did specification and different people are approaching this differently and so it's not yet completely defined on like what this specification should look like um, but basically there's different ways to construct this. Uport has focused now on public private key pairs. Um, it allows you this did protocol to receive attestations and then other people who when requested know kind of how to use that scheme around that. Gotcha. Yep. And then what was the last thing? Yeah, so there's actually two more. Oh. Um, so the, the zero trust data store is being able to hold these claims and <clears throat> you can always authenticate the origin of where this claim came from. And so whether it's on your phone, which is where we store attestations now, or uh, a server or a, <clears throat> a USB stick, it doesn't matter where you keep it. And so that's this idea of a zero trust data store. You can always prove the authenticity of what trust anchor it came from. Gotcha. Yeah. And then along with that, yes. there's... The final one is the universal discoverability. And so if you have a decentralized identity, you obviously need to interact with other decentralized identities. And so if you think about Web 2.0 applications, all the major ones like <clears throat> Uber, Airbnb, Amazon, it's all about peer-to-peer -peer relationship discovery with reputation attached to that. And so how do you fulfill that same requirement of connecting with other people uh, without that middleman? And so you need universal discoverability and be able to broadcast intent of who you want to connect with and to be able to do, to do that matchmaking. So what's the overall goal of your platform? To build the back end or to actually make these Ubers and these Airbnbs possible? That is like an effect of being able to do this. Right now, Uport is focused on the protocol of allowing the different pieces to come together. Um, so it's easy to just download the Uport Connect JavaScript library, put that into your front end, put it into your back end, and whatever business solution you want to solve, you can make that happen. And so we're providing the pieces and the parts to the puzzle. Awesome. And yeah. if someone wants to build on it, you just have a GitHub up with all of yep. that? Yep. And where can they find more? What is so that GitHub? GitHub slash Uport dash project. Um, and then of course, developer.uport.me. Awesome. Thank yeah, you so much. Absolutely. My pleasure.